Hi, we're Matt and Christina. We love living in our off-grid, self-sustaining home in the mountains of southwest Colorado. Since selling our front-wheel drive van Clarity, we've been waiting impatiently for our new all-wheel drive van and getting some much-needed house projects ticked off our list. We can't wait to apply what we've learned from building Clarity and traveling in her for three years to building out one of the first transit trail additions to come off the line. It is so beautiful out here this morning. We just looked out and thought, oh my God, I have to show you this. You guessed it. Our Transit Trail Edition van has yet to arrive, but Matt is continuing to cleverly devise van build projects he can do even without the van. So the next thing I'm doing is I've actually laid out a 12 volt DC panel in our last van, Clarity. I actually put switches wherever it made sense for me to put them and did it as I went because I had no idea at the time really what I was doing, what I was going to put in. But this time I know exactly what lights I'm going to have. Instead of using fuse blocks, I'm using circuit breakers. I've simplified the number of circuit breakers and I'm using all the same switches and putting them on a panel. What I did is I made a mock-up of the panel out of a piece of uh, quarter inch. Actually, I had a piece of MDF that's an eighth inch. And this is what it looks like. This is a 12 by 12 panel. And I decided I didn't need it that big. And so I cut it down, I made it nine by nine. And then I bought a piece of 1 16th inch aluminum just bought it online there's a link in the description below to where i bought that it came in a 12 by 12 so i cut it to 9 by 9 and i'm drilling the holes and then i'll mount all those and wire them up well i set the camera up but didn't turn it on so you didn't get to see me drill any holes first thing i had to do was get all the circuit breakers and switches here and make sure i knew exactly what size the holes needed to be and um, then I made the mock-up so I could make sure that everything fit and then I used those diameters to drill these holes and this big hole here this is where the Victron battery monitor is going So I got impatient when I was drilling the holes for this 12 volt panel and um, and I let the drill run a little bit too fast when I was drilling the half inch holes and on one of them in particular it really wallered out the hole right there and then I also realized after that was all done that those holes are just a little bit too big for the device on these switches. So this switch has a nut on it. This nut is designed to go into a hole that I measured it to be a half inch. It's actually slightly under a half inch. It's a 64th under a half inch. So with that hole being wallered out, it's actually the hole got so big that the whole nut fits through it. But the other problem that I have is if you look at these, they don't talk about this when you order it. Right here, there's a little nick that sticks out. And 
That little thing is obviously designed to go into a quarter inch hole with a, uh, with a notch in it. And of course, what I wanted to do is tighten down against this face and put this nut on it and have the nut go through the hole. And it looks like a, a 16th of an inch will fit. So I thought that was gonna be perfect. But what ended up happening is because that tick mark sticks up there, that little tick piece, it sticks up and prevents this from tightening down onto a six inch piece of aluminum. So now what I've got to do is I actually had to make another piece and I fabricated this piece out of one of the leftover pieces I cut off from this 12 by 12 sheet and just drilled new holes and cut it. If you're wondering how I cut this piece of aluminum, I literally do it on my chop saw. And I have a chop saw blade that I've labeled as aluminum. I use it only for aluminum. And I just go out and I change the blade on the chop saw. You might know it as a miter saw. And then you can just cut these like, like you cut a piece of wood. And they wear down the blade a little faster than wood does, so I don't use my wood blades when I'm cutting aluminum but they'll cut right through it nice and clean. And then you can just use a piece of sandpaper to sand the edge and get a nice finished product. So what I'm going to do here is I'm literally going to epoxy this piece onto this face. And then that'll give me an eighth inch to work with. And then this nut will tighten down onto there and fit in the hole because the hole's now the right size. Works great. So I thought I would talk to you a little bit about electricity and why I decided with my 12 volt system to simplify it and only go with five breakers. And actually one of those breakers is an input main breaker and the other four are all the breakers I have for my 12 volt system. If you don't know what current is, you can think of current as being like uh, water running through a hose. Voltage is like the push behind the flow of water and current is the actual flow uh, of electrons. Now that we've covered what is meant by the terms voltage and current, let's talk a bit more about resistance. Resistance is basically the opposition to current flow, such as a restriction in a pipe in the water analogy we used. Resistance is measured in ohms. One ohm of resistance allows one amp of current to flow when there is one volt of power. For those who like math, E equals IR, where E is the power in volts, I is current in amps, and R is resistance in ohms. There are many ways to get resistance in a circuit, but for this discussion, I'm interested in wires. Wires have resistance. Large diameter wire has low resistance, so allows lots of current flow. Small diameter wire has higher resistance. Also, longer wire has higher resistance than shorter wire. That's why when you look at wire tables, the length of wire changes the required wire size in a circuit when a specific amount of current is needed to operate a device. Okay, before we talk about circuit and device protection, let's cover a bit about circuits. There are two basic types of circuits, series and parallel. The most simple circuit looks like this. There's simply a power source and a load, such as a light you can think of the current flowing from positive to negative. When wires are connected providing a path for the current flow because the metal in the wire is an electrical conductor, from the power source through the load and back to the power source, we are said to have a complete or closed circuit. 
Assuming the light lights up when connected, it will stay lit until the wires are disconnected. Now I decided I want a way to turn the light off when I'm not using it. Most of us know we just turn the light switch off, right? So how does that look when we draw it in the circuit? What we just did is put the switch in series with the light. When we flip the switch, the circuit connection through the switch is opened, effectively creating an open circuit, which stops the current flow. By nature, any device that uses current has resistance. Going back to the formula that expresses the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, E equals IR, and arranging it to solve for I, we see that I equals E divided by R. Let's say that the power is 12 volts and the resistance is 2 ohms. Then the current in the circuit is 12 volts divided by 2 ohms, which equals 6 amps. Now let's add a couple more lights in series with the first light. Well, if you've done this before, you've noticed the lights get progressively dimmer as we add lights. Why? Each time we add a light, we are adding resistance. The added resistance reduces the current flow so the lights get dimmer. So far, so good? If we want the same power source to power more than one light without dimming the lights, how do we do that? Let's look at this circuit. Notice the three lights are parallel to each other. This is called a parallel circuit. Now the battery is supplying 12 volts to each of the three lights independently. Because the resistance in each light is still 2 ohms, it follows that each light has 12 volts divided by 2 ohms equals 6 amps running through it. So the battery must be able to handle 3 times 6 amps or 18 amps of current to the circuit in order for each light to shine at full brightness. Pretty cool, eh? As long as the battery can handle the extra current flow. Okay, now that we're all on the same page with this concept, let's look at circuit protection. Remember when we said that resistance is higher in smaller wire? What happens when we try to push too much current through a small wire? Well, I'll tell you the answer. It gets hot! If it gets too hot, it can melt and cause sparks and fire. A fuse is simply a calibrated wire built into a fire-resistant housing. If the current goes too high, the wire will melt away, which will open the circuit and stop the current flow. That's basically a heat-activated switch. Replace the fuse with a new one and the current will flow once again. A circuit breaker is simply a heat activated switch that is usually resettable, eliminating the need to carry fuses. In the same vein, the wires and components in an electrical device are designed to handle only so much current. If the current goes too high, the device can burn up also causing a fire. So how do we protect the circuit? Just like we put a switch in series with the light in the simple circuit, we can also put a fuse or breaker in series in the circuit. If sized correctly, the fuse or breaker will interrupt current flow before too much current can cause damage to the wires or to the device. Let's look at the circuits again one last time. If the device is on a dedicated circuit, such as this simple circuit, a breaker or fuse in series with the load, let's say a refrigerator, the fuse will protect both the wire and the device as long as the wire is sized to handle the current required by the device and the fuse is sized to open the circuit before a dangerous current is reached. Typically, a manufacturer specs out a required fuse rating. In the parallel circuit, if we select a wire size capable of handling the combined current flow from all the parallel devices in the circuit, we can protect the wire by placing a breaker or fuse in series with the parallel branches of the circuit. We can then protect each device individually by placing a fuse or breaker in series in that specific parallel branch without affecting the other branches in the circuit. Now let's go back to my circuit design. In addition to the fridge and the water pump and the main, I've also got one for the port side of the van and for the starboard side of the van. Here's a list of the current draw of each of the devices in my 12 volt panel. 
Notice that the water pump and fridge are both on simple circuits and the port and starboard circuits are parallel circuits. As you can see, the max air fan and the charging stations have the highest current draw when on full power. The lights and other fans have minimum current draw. I'm choosing to put the lights and fans in parallel with each of the higher use devices and keep the 15 amp breakers and 14 gauge wires as the feeds to these parallel devices. I remember reading somewhere that the Max Air fan has a built-in self-resetting breaker on the motor, so an inline fuse is not necessary, although I looked for it last night and I couldn't find it. Worst case, I put a 7 amp fuse in line when I install the fan. Easy peasy. The Propex heater comes with an inline fuse. I'll also protect the chargers with whatever they need when I get them and see their requirements. So essentially all I have to do is run one wire over to the starboard side of the van and this is going to live on the port side of the van and then um, the water pump is also on the starboard side of the van so that will go over there and the fridge is on this side of the van so I literally only have two 12 volt wires going across the van to the other side. So the other things that I have on here is uh, my battery monitor. I've got a WeBoost switch so that I can turn that off. And then I have dimmers for my lights. I've got forward lights, overhead lights, and galley lights. So the forward lights are literally um, lights that are gonna be over the tables where the swivel seats are. And then the overhead lights will be central lights going down the center of the van that light up the entire van. And then the galley lights will be under cabinet lighting for the kitchen. We'll have individual reading lights, one on either side of the bed by our head, and those will have their own dimmers right there where we can reach them. And then I'll have rear floodlights on the outside that, so that I can really light a space up and when I'm backing up at night, uh, or if we need to do some work out there. And those are gonna run off auxiliary switches in the front of the van. And I think I'll probably have another one outside under the awning. Um, haven't decided on that for sure, but if I do, I'll, I'll run a wire anyway that I can get to um, on that side of the van that goes to another auxiliary switch. There are four auxiliary switches in that transit trail. So my 12 volt DC panel here is not perfect. If you look closely, you'll see it's got a little bit of uh, epoxy around it and you know, it's got a place where I slipped with a pair of pliers and got a little scratch on it. But the way I look at it, it's perfectly imperfect and it's still gonna look pretty nice and it's gonna be super functional. There's one thing I really wanna do and that is acknowledge Christina for all the work she's done on this video, uh, putting together all these graphics. It was originally her idea and I was thinking of doing it with me drawing out the circuits and I have terrible handwriting and I can't freehand draw straight lines and um, it's really hard on my eyes to see small things and so there's like a number of reasons why I was really happy when she just thought oh let me put it on graphics that sounds like it'd be fun. She's worked on it for three days putting in graphics and it's been uh, a long arduous process but hopefully this video will be helpful for you and um, if it is think about giving us a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to our channel. Leave us a comment and let us know what other kinds of things would be helpful for you because I'd be happy to do a little more informative instructional videos uh, on some of the things that we can do kind of quickly to help people who are building out their own vans. Look forward to upcoming videos if you want to see how we put this wiring into action now that we have some basic understanding of the electrical system and how to wire in series and parallel, we can actually see it happen in real life. Um, so we'll see you down the road. If you'd like our support while building out your van or designing your off-grid home, check out our group or personal video chat perks on our Patreon page.